Welcome. Welcome to this lecture for the Sharing Perspective Foundation. My name is Anglit Wille from Leiden University. Um, in the past weeks, several topics have been shared here online uh, to give you a perspective on the European crisis. And uh, today I'm going to add a new perspective. I'm going to talk about the development of a new conflict line in European democracies. A conflict line that is based on educational differences. The question I like to explore in this lecture is to what extent the growth in educational attainment in Europe is linked to the rise of uh, new political divisions. Do social groups of a, uh, different educational levels or attainments, are they also the basis for new political cleavage formation? Well, let me dwell first on the concept of cleavage, that's a bit of a post concept which political scientists use. Uh, when they speak about political cleavages, political science, scientists usually talk about deep-seated or long-standing social divisions and conflicts within a society. Conflicts that have a political significance. Cleavages separate voting blocks or supporters and opponents on a political issue. Um, and the concept became very popular in the 1960s when the American Martin Lipset and the Norwegian uh, Stein Rocken um, introduced the concept or used the concept in a very influential article in which they defined the basic cleavages for Western European democracies. They saw the following cleavages or conflict lines in Western European democracies. A class conflict or a class cleavage, um, the conflict between owners and workers, which is uh, causing the formation of uh, parties on the left and parties on the right. A religious uh, cleavage, based on a division between religious and uh, secular voters, which is also um, linked to the formation of religious parties in Western European uh, democracies. They saw uh, ethnic cleavages, ethnic divisions, uh, which are often linked to religious, national, language or cultural differences, and which often form the basis for political cleavages, especially when it's uh, uh, linked to economic or political inequalities. And they saw a cleavage based on spatial separation. So the division between rural areas and urban areas is uh, often a base for political cleavage formation. Um, we can think about uh, Spain, for instance, uh, in which we see regionalist and separatist parties. Um, other countries are Belgium or uh, Scotland in the UK. Lipset and Rocken wrote in uh, 1967 that these divisions have been frozen in uh, most political systems in Western European democracies and that these uh, uh, frozen uh, cleavages would remain stable in the foreseeable future. But by the 1970s it was questionable if they were still right about this uh, freezing hypothesis. As a result of the increasing modernization of Western uh, societies, traditional cleavages seemed to have eroded and become less and became less relevant. So it was a question if the traditional categories, socio-demographic categories such as class and religion, were still relevant. Political scientists disagreed about the extent to which these traditional cleavages lost some or even all of their mobilizing power. A fierce debate, and uh, we see three positions in this debate. A uh, first position was a group of scholars that maintained that the freezing hypothesis still applied and that old cleavages were continued to play an important role in contemporary uh, political uh, uh, societies. Secondly, there was a group uh, that claimed that in almost all countries there was an important decline in the ability of social divisions to structure political behavior and especially voting behavior. So this uh, de-alignment thesis, as it was called, uh, were um, pointing out to indicators as increased abstention, uh, lower voter turnouts and uh, new political parties and increased electoral volatility uh, and all these indicators were signs that uh, there was a sort of de-alignment. 
So um, it was suggested there was a universal decline in cleavage politics and there were no new cleavages in place. The third position in the debate talked about realignment, which means that uh, cleavages are not frozen, but that they are changing and that uh, new cleavages are forming, gaining importance, and old ones are uh, losing uh, political relevance. So cleavage-like categories such as age, generation, gender, the rise of socio-cultural professions or post-materialist values are all relevant uh, basis for new political conflict lines. Recently this discussion has been supplemented by a line of research um, that points to the increasing importance of new educational cleavages as a key to understanding cultural divides in uh, politics. In the Netherlands, uh, my colleague Mark Bovis and I have uh, documented how educational differences have been a driving force in the development of a, a new educational cleavage. And for Denmark, we see uh, Rune Stubacher coming to comparable observations and conclusions. The rise of these edu educational differences has created a new division in uh, Denmark and uh, the Netherlands. But we can uh, wonder to what extent is this part of a more general trend. Is there evidence for the rise of a new conflict dimension in politics in European democracies that's based on educational differences? But when we talk about cleavages and we want to explore the rise of these new cleavages in, uh, West, in European societies, in European democracies, then it's important to realize that three elements have to be uh, present before we can really talk about political cleavages, full cleavages. Um, and these elements consist of uh, a structural element, a cultural element, and a more behavioral element. First, the uh, structural, the more objective uh, kind of element. Cleavages always have a structural basis and uh, refer to a division uh, between opposite social groups. That's a first condition for talking about cleavages. The second, the cultural element, uh, means that the cleavage not only has to be uh, divided by an objective difference, but also by a more uh, common mindset of this social group. They share political values, they share political preferences. A third element, which has to be uh, present before we can really talk about uh, political cleavages, is that they need to be willing to act on that basis, so they must be able to express their political preferences in the political arena through various aspects of uh, political behavior. Um, behavior that has to be organized by political parties or by other organizations. So uh, it's not enough to see objective or cultural differences, there must be a readiness uh, and a capacity to act on, uh, on these preferences. Uh, and to have some political parties or organizations that are uh, representing these uh, preferences into the political arena. Knowing that a cleavage has to contain these three elements, let us explore the uh, elements and see to what extent the contours of an educational cleavage in politics can be observed across Europe. Um, on the base of an analysis of the European social survey uh, data, uh, several rounds and uh, in several European countries, we can um, come to the following uh, conclusions or findings. First, let us look at the structural element. Um, education has become a relevant structural uh, uh, category. Um, in all European countries, the number of well-educated have risen sharply in the past four decades. And in uh, many countries, uh, the well-educated have become a very sizable uh, social group, almost on par with the lower and the middle-educated uh, categories. For a large part of the 20th century, the uh, majority of citizens in most European countries had few educational qualification and in fact fell into the uh, low-educated category. Uh, and then it had very little uh, sense to speak of distinct educational groups. 
However, educational attainment has uh, risen uh, uh, substantially during the last uh, quarter of the 20th century. And in the um, first decade of this century, of course, and in 2011, according to Eurostat, we see a small third of the EU 27 workforce, which had low educational qualification, but also a small third was well educated. So this uh, rapid and uh, massive expansion of uh, the number of well educated uh, provides the demographic basis for uh, cleavage formation. Second, let's look at the uh, cultural element. Um, can we observe differences um, in political preferences between well-educated and uh, less uh, well-educated uh, citizens? Well, we see there are um, only minor differences uh, regarding the traditional left-right self-placement or uh, issues, economic issues related to the reduction of uh, income levels. So. Um, in that respect, higher and lower educated groups are not uh, really thinking different. We see, our, we see however, uh, significant differences uh, with regard to the relative new cultural issues that have become salient in the past decades. Well-educated uh, and less well-educated uh, show significant differences in preferences regarding cultural issues, such as immigration, ethnic diversity, European unification. Low educated have more nationalist, anti-immigration and Euro-skeptic political preferences, uh, whereas the well educated, on the other hand, endorse more cosmopolitan, more pro-immigration and more pro-European values. Third, are there differences in political organization between the well and the low educated. Well, what we see is that particularly in Western and Northern European countries, uh, the rise of a uh, new type of parties is uh, visible and that uh, we see on the one hand green and social liberal parties versus the new national populist parties on the other. Um, the electorate of the green and social liberal parties uh, is predominantly well-educated, uh, whereas the nationalistic uh, right-wing parties tends to attract uh, more voters from the less and the middle-educated. So what we observe is a divide between well-educated uh, citizens with more cosmopolitan values and people with low educational attainment who tend to espouse more nationalist uh, values and preferences and that divide runs parallel to the rise of this new divide in the political uh, landscape between social liberal parties and more nationalist parties. So what we see is um, uh, three divides, uh, a structural, a cultural and a more behavioral. Uh, the final question is of course to what extent these divides are, are overlapping. Um, on the basis of a very comparative uh, analysis, uh, it is possible to see some differences uh, across Europe. Um, educational differences matter most in the western and northern countries of Europe, in uh, Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, and to somewhat lesser extent uh, to in Ireland. Um, in these countries, the contours of something what we uh, will call a full cleavage are visible in the southern, the Mediterranean countries um, and, and eastern countries we uh, see less uh, clear overlap in the uh, cleavage elements. Uh, the link between education and all uh, these cultural and institutional behavioral elements um, is the weakest in eastern European countries. Of course, the conditions uh, for the development of new educational divisions across Europe uh, vary, yeah, are different. We see that Europe is still a continent with very distinct geopolitical areas in terms of level of socio-economic development and political history. Um, given the large differences in social stratification, in political history, electoral systems uh, between all those European countries, we see and we expect different paths and stages in the process of 
cleavage formation along educational lines. So it's not surprising to see also these different patterns in cleavage uh, uh, crystallization. The degree to which uh, the contours of an educational cleavage are present varies within Europe. In some regions we see uh, new divisions, in others we see that the different cleavage elements have been uh, evolved more into a full cleavage. So um, it's still too early to tell and to reach definite conclusions about the standing of these new rising cleavages. Uh, for this and more, uh, more monitoring, more empirical assessment, more comparative analysis uh, is needed to uh, establish if this freezing of cleavage elements is uh, uh, continuing and under what social and political conditions. But it's clear that the discussion on the rise of new uh, cleavages and the relevance of uh, old cleavages um, will continue. It's uh, uh, also clear that education as a sociodemographic category uh, played only a minor role in uh, the past and has become more and more salient in contemporary politics. Um, and that the educational differences, the emergence of these educational differences, divides and cleavages can have a significant impact on uh, the working of European democracies. Um, they can create new social groups, they have created new social groups in Europe and they can be the basis for new uh, lines, for new political conflict lines and new political divisions. Thank you for your attention.